And then so. you have Michigan State, preseason top five team, started the season out four and four, just got drubbed at home by Wisconsin, and they have tied the worst start through eight games for any preseason AP top five team in the last 40 years. Uh, give me give me a panic meter on uh, on those two programs. Who are you more worried about right now? I think I'm more worried about Maryland because at least Duke, or, sorry, at least Michigan State has been like competitive with Arizona and Duke. They they have not won the games, but they've at least not they've they've not gotten blown out. Whereas Maryland's lost to Davidson, UAB, Nova, who's what like a top thirty five team. And if you're talking about Indiana, they're they're probably Indiana and Ken Palm is like in the sixties, and mm-hmm. they they scored fifty three points. Their their offense is. Horrible. They look disjointed. They've shot the ball so poorly. I don't think Maryland has great depth. So I'm what am how am I rating this? Like one to ten? Yeah, we can do one to ten. That'll work. All right. For Maryland, I'm gonna go. I'm at like a nine. I'm a nine at worried about about them. Uh just because the expectations were so high. And you know, you get Jameer Young to come back, Julian Reese comes back, Dante Scott comes back, and they just they have not figured it out and the shooting is is really really poor uh michigan state i will put the number i'll put the number at eight just to just a hair under maryland i suppose um because of the fact that they they were they did have chance against duke they did have opportunities against arizona they still could they could get baylor in what's a i guess pseudo home game in detroit so you, you at least have another one more crack at a quality non-conference win, but they just seeing them play Wisconsin, you know, Wisconsin comes into your building, they're ranked. Michigan state does not have a marquee win on the season yet. And to see them play with the effort and just the lack of energy that they had in that game in that building with what their season has been so far, you know, AJ Hogard actually played better in that game but I still just you know he he makes a couple threes gets them back into the game along with Tyson Walker and then just falls in love with the the three-point shot that's not what he does you know and I I know Tom Izzo and him have had plenty of meetings (laughs) heart-to-hearts chats whatever you want to call it like these guys have spent a lot of time talking about what he expects of AJ Hogard and I just am like, you know, when he made him, I even thought to myself, this, this could be fool's gold. This could be one of those things where now he takes a couple more when he should drive it and make a play at the rim or make a play for somebody else. Outside of Tyson Walker, they they look so lost. And I will give Malik Hall, I think you have to give him the benefit of the doubt because he had been sick from Friday to Tuesday. They didn't expect him to play. He tried to, to gut it out. He He did not look... Like he had much energy, which you know, if you know, when you get the flu like that, that that just is what it is. But the, without him, they don't have anybody that can score with their back to the basket. Jay Nakins is he looks lost with his role right now, which is crazy because I think he has every tool to be a, a high level player, um, certainly at this level. And then just Michigan State talks about how they want to run. You hear that from Izzo, you heard it in the preseason, you've heard it over the course of this non-conference slate, they didn't run at all. They're not even looking. It was just a half-court grinded out. So it's like they are they just look so lost, which is pretty surprising. Now, if anyone can get them right, it's that dude. He he has done it before. He finds ways to, to make his teams improve. But this is a huge game for them Sunday. At Nebraska, against the Nebraska team that looked horrible in the second half last night at Minnesota in a loss. They'll put 15,000 people in that building. Oh, that place will be packed. That place will be – it'll be hyped. But I think for both those teams, Nebraska and Michigan State, must win. That that is a must-win game. And then a huge opportunity for the Spartans against Baylor. But I I just – I don't like the way they're playing. It it is a rough watch right now. Yeah, I don't – I don't know if it's fixable either without getting – like you need without getting Jade Nakins to become a borderline all-Big Ten guy, which is what I think a lot of us thought he would turn into this year. And without getting A.J. Hogard to be the A.J. Hogard that showed up for, what, like the last month of last season? I mean, yeah, it's just, like six games probably. Yeah, you're you're relying on a six-foot guard whose strength is kind of creating his own shot and not making things easier for others. 
to right. carry you in games. And the the worrying part to me, Robbie, is that it feels like every one of these losses, they just get down so big, so early. Well, their, star- their starts are abysmal. Yes. They did it again against Wisconsin. It's like 12-2 at the media timeout. Steven Crowell makes two threes. Storr makes a three. I mean, it was the same thing with, with the uh, James Madison loss. Same, same thing, thing with, with Arizona. The, with the Arizona game. Same thing with the uh, with the Duke game. They're just digging themselves these massive holes, and then they got to find their way back out of it. And even, I mean, they they did the same thing. They they did cut that lead, I bet, in the second half against Wisconsin down to five or six. But, man, you have to ex- you, have, you extend so much energy coming back. Why don't you just start the game off with the same sense of urgency? I don't know. The, the A.J. Hogarth situation is is certainly difficult as well. Um, I, I just – the shooting for them also, I mean, they just can't make a shot. So you you add up the the poor point guard play. Jay Nakin seems like he's lost in his role. The shooting is bad. They get nothing in transition. And you've got pretty much Tyson Walker who can who is honestly playing at a high level, creating for himself. And you've got a recipe for a team that's just not very good right now. 